All right, turning your King James Bible to Ephesians chapter 1. I want to talk to you today about the seal of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is going to be uh, responding to a sermon idea that I had, and I said, should I do it? And some of you said yes, others said, no, you don't really need to. I'm going to do it in just a slightly different way of approaching this subject. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to tell you exactly what the sermon is about, so you'll understand right up front where I'm going to be going with this study. Uh, the issue of the flesh struggling against the spirit. Um, people, I've heard, had somebody in the comments say, oh, that's Gnosticism, you're preaching Gnosticism. It's not Gnosticism. You don't understand. Um, the seal of the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit moves into you. God puts his seal upon you and your life changes as a result of that. All right, understand what happens at salvation. Before salvation, here is this man standing before you, all right? I have a body, a soul, and a spirit. Everybody has a body, soul, and spirit before they get saved, okay? The body is corruptible. The spirit is there. You have the breath of life, you know, like that. You can feel breath on your hand. You have the breath of life, and you have a soul. All three parts are there. But the seal of the Holy Spirit comes when you get saved. You put your faith in. In Jesus Christ, you say, this flesh has committed sins, and my soul needs to be redeemed. My spirit needs to be born again. I need the Holy Spirit of God to come into my life and show me things, show me truth, guide me through the scriptures, reveal things to me, give me that conscience, um, a Holy Spirit-led conscience. You have a normal conscience that's there from God, but it's not the same as when the Holy Spirit shows you things. But you get saved, and now... Your soul is redeemed. And what happens is, we will see this in the study, there's a circumcision made without hands where your soul and your body are separated. All right? Your spirit is quickened. Now you start to understand things. It's like having a radio that has dead batteries and then somebody puts brand new fresh batteries in and the radio comes on and lights are working and all kinds of neat things are happening. Well, that's the way it is with your spirit. The spirit of your mind up here, the Holy Spirit, when he moves into a Christian, he seals them by saying, okay, I'm in here now. I'm not leaving. Uh, and he starts to reveal truth to you. The soul there is redeemed. Now it's made incorrupt, or, or uh, not incorrupt, but it's made, um, it's saved. God saves the soul. The body of flesh is separated from the soul. So then what you do uh, it doesn't affect the soul. That's why it had in the Old Testament, the soul that sinneth it shall die. When they would touch things, they'd be unclean. And you have to go do this, and you have to do that because your soul is unclean now. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. So your soul is still corruptible, but the Holy Spirit up here in your mind now starts to tell you to clean up that flesh so that you can live and not suffer the consequences of sin in your life. I'm going to prove it to you in this study. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1. Let's see about this thing of sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. So you see it right there, verse 13, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. There you see the sealing of the Holy Spirit of promise. He comes and he says, okay, you're now mine. I'm going to now put my uh, spirit in contact with your spirit and we're going to I'm going to show you things things are going to start to make sense Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 um, <clears throat> verse 17 this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind you have no Holy Spirit, you're just walking in vain, doing things that are vain. The vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. 
Again, you see they're, they're walking in darkness. They don't understand. The Holy Spirit's not there to guide them. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. There's a new life. Very important. Verse 23, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. I see so many people, I'm a Christian, and they use all kinds of profanity. And with no conscience at all. It's not, well, I slipped, a word slipped out or something. Just no conviction. They're not saved. I've been saying that for a while. You can watch my other studies on that. But look at verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. It doesn't say unto the time that you sin or you backslide or whatever. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. Whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit of God seals you. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. There's a change that happens. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure about this changed life stuff. <laughs> okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Turn there. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. The Bible says, But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the or given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul that to spare you I came not as yet unto Corinth, not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. Okay, what is going on there? What the Bible is saying there is what the scriptures are saying is that God has given you that Spirit. There, the Holy Spirit of God comes upon you and he seals you with that Holy Spirit. And there's an earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So it isn't some kind of a thing of you're unsure and you're not really sure yes or no here, what I don't really get it and, you know, it's just kind of, no. It's a definite changed life that happens. And the earnest of the Spirit comes and all of a sudden you're, you have this interest for the things of the Lord and you... You'd love to, to hear the old hymns and you want to sing the old hymns and you want to read his word. You want to tell people about Jesus Christ. You, you clean up your life. It's the earnest of the spirit. That's the seal that's there. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Verse 14. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. You know, I just need to say something here. A lot of you have been writing me and, they, and you say, Brother, there's these Jews, these rabbis, and they come out and they have all these arguments, or these people have all these arguments, atheists or Catholics or this or that or whatever else, and they have all these arguments. I don't know how to answer them. It's starting to hurt my faith. Uh, they're subverting you. Stop listening to them. You believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? No, you don't? Okay, well, sorry. Um, and they start to give you things that you can't answer and whatever else. That's their job. It's the subverting of you. That's their whole point in life. That's why they exist. They're servants of the devil. And uh, you can research them and how do, would I answer this and whatever else. The Lord will give you answers. But uh, when it comes right down to it, they will just 
continue to come up with more questions. That's why a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, the Bible says. Just get away from them. They're trying to subvert you. <clears throat> Verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You should study. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Uh, profane stuff, people, are, if they're profane, if they have a very wicked language, you know, mouth, you think of profanity, shun that stuff. I don't want to hear that. No, you, you can't control your mouth and you're not anybody I want to listen to. And your vain babblings of, you know, uh, endless genealogies and Jewish fables and all the other stuff the Bible warns about. Uh, you need to watch out for that stuff. Um, verse 17, And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. The resurrection is past already. People start to mess around with the resurrection. Uh, it already happened. The, everything happened in the first century. Uh, we're just kind of living here and there's no millennial kingdom and we're just kind of existing. You know, preterism, historicism. Um, well, the resurrection is not going to be till the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. And we're going to have to go through the Antichrist thing and take, refuse to take the mark of the beast and be beheaded and all that. They're messing with the resurrection. The resurrection comes before the Antichrist is, re is revealed. Look at John. He was called up to heaven. Again, I've proved it. Study after study, many hours, I've answered all the questions. So for the little funny bunnies out there that say, Brian, you need to study it better and whatever. No, you need to study it better. I have studied it for many years. And I've answered all the questions. So, you know, I don't want to take the time to watch Brother Brian's videos and things. Okay, then I can't help you. Um, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal... What's the seal? The Lord knoweth them that are his, and that every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Have you turned from sin? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Are you following that verse? What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Uh, victory in Jesus. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Has there been a change? Has the Holy Spirit come in and convicted you and said, okay, I'm going to start to do things with your life? Colossians 2. Go to Colossians 2. Colossians chapter 2, beginning in verse 4. And this I say, lest any man beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Always amazes me. I hear people, oh, I'm a Christian. I have a degree in philosophy. And I think, okay, <laughs> can you read plain English here? But, uh, yeah, uh, you can get spoiled through philosophy pretty quickly. Verse 9, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, cutting the flesh away from the soul. That's what's going on there. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having, having forgiven you all trespasses. Okay? Um, I don't have a problem with what goes on in my flesh. That's Gnosticism to say that there's a struggle between the flesh and the spirit. That's crazy because God made your flesh, your flesh is beautiful, and you should get along with your flesh, and you should thank God for your flesh. And I've dealt with these heretics for years. Um, then why is there a circumcision? 
and putting off the, the flesh, the sins of the flesh, the body of flesh. You see, the real seal of the Holy Spirit, when you really understand, okay, yeah, it took this time, it's, it's real, it's, I'm actually saved, is you can see that in, as a lost Christian, what, it'll do, what you'll do is you just kind of put on this you know, fake little facade, you put on your little Christian outfit, Literally, that's why they wear the outfits when they go to the church buildings, you know, and they go to the church and, oh, hey, brother, oh, hello, sister, and oh, hi, and hi, and uh, sing your little hymns and, uh, you know, everything else. I sing in the choir and I'm going to teach adult Sunday school class. And I went to a mission trip and we handed out toothbrushes to the poor, impoverished peoples and, and you know, bandaged their wounds and, you know, all the nice little things and everything. And then you go home and you're watching the R-rated movies and the, using profanity and all kinds of other stuff. See, that's fake. I used to do that. I know. All right, I did that for a long time, 25 years of life. I was raised in churches and everything. I was wicked that whole time, pretending to be a Christian. I was, I was pretty good, though. I really was. I, I wasn't really that bad of a guy, seriously speaking, um, but I was lost. I wasn't born again. But then when you get saved, all of a sudden now you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, Ugh. I'm pretty vile. Uh, uh. Oh, Lord, I can't believe I did that sin again. I'm sorry. <sighs> you know, and we're going to see this Romans 7. We're going there, the whole thing. That's the seal of the Holy Spirit. The seal of the Holy Spirit is recognizing the fact that there's something different in here now and that my soul is now cut off, cut apart from this flesh. And you realize just how wicked your flesh is. And, and you just think, corruptible thing here. Look at, the, look at the wrinkles on my hands now. I'm getting old and... And yet, you know, this corruptible flesh, we shall change, this vile body shall be changed and become incorruptible. You look and you say, oh, yeah, <laughs> earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, you know, from heaven and all these different things. We'll see about some of this as we continue. But we're buried with him. The circumcision, it's made without hands putting off the sins, this body of flesh. Romans chapter 6, let's go there. We'll see about this. This is what I said. If you want to see the difference between the, you know, when you get saved um, and the Holy Spirit moves in, you're going to understand that there's some, um, the sin that's there in the body. All you have to do is just read Romans chapter 6 through chapter 8, the whole thing. You know, Romans 6, Romans 7, Romans 8. Once you read through that and you understand it, yeah, there's all the proof that you need. I'm giving you a little bit more proof today of this war between the flesh and the spirit. All right, I'll show you the scriptures on that here, here as we continue, but let's see about this thing of being buried. You're circumcised, the circumcision made without hands. God cuts you free. Your soul and your flesh now is free. Let's read about this. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no, minion, hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hold on there. Um, after you believe, Ephesians chapter 1, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed until the day of redemption. Um, not until you get messed up and you backslide and you sin and whatever. And what's it say here? For that he died, he died unto sin once. Verse 11, likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Once. Okay. So all the people out there that think that you can sin and you lose your salvation, you can get it back and then lose it again and you get it back and then, you know, no, 
You need to get things figured out. It's wants. The Bible does teach eternal security for a Christian right now. We're not talking about Old Testament. We're not talking about in the future time of Jacob's trouble. Once saved, always saved right now. Please understand that. Don't run off to Hebrews and whatever else. Then get other passages that are not directed at you doctrinally. Be very careful about that. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? I'll get back to this here in a minute. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as, as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's written to a Christian. Here's the whole point. Okay. Um, my sin was never redeemed. Or my, excuse me, my, my flesh, my body of flesh was never redeemed. Okay. Um, this flesh is still corruptible. I don't have to serve sin anymore because the Holy Spirit's within me and my body of flesh has been cut free of my soul. Now I can go out and I can do all the sins out there in the world that the world does, but why would I want to? What possible profit would there be in, in me going and fornicating or going and getting drunk or doing drugs or something like that? No, thank you. I don't want to mess with that stuff. That's the point of the passage here. But there's a struggle between the flesh and the spirit. We're going to see that as we continue. Go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, beginning in verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. He's talking about his body of flesh. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. How many times have you sung a song or hummed the song or whatever that was secular, and in your mind, your mind is saying, the Holy Spirit in your mind is saying, why don't you sing a hymn? Why don't you praise the Lord? Why are you doing singing that secular song? You say, does that ever happen to you, Brother Brian? Oh, I don't know, just about uh, every day, every couple of times a day, you know, maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 times a day or something. I, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, it happens, happens a lot. The things that I know I should be doing. The times I, you know, need something to read and I'll think I should grab my Bible or something about the Bible or some kind of thing. Oh, there's a catalog that came in. I wonder what the new camping gear is and the new you know, uh, sportsman's guide or cheaper than dirt or, you know, some catalog. Oh, I wonder what the it's in there. And... Mm -hmm. Verse 16, if then I do that which I would... Not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Thou then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Notice that one. Paul's making a difference between his soul and his spirit, and he's saying, it isn't I that do it, soul and spirit. It's sin that dwelleth in me, in this corruptible flesh. This corruptible flesh says, hey, why don't you forget about eating good food? Let's get some candy. That'd make me feel better. Oh, yeah, maybe I should. And the Spirit says, is it going to help you with your studies in the Scriptures? Going to make you a stronger man of God? Uh, <laughs> no. Then why are you doing it? Okay, I understand. Just one. Okay, just just this once, you know, eat it and whatever. 
The lime's really good. The flesh says, yes, it was. Take another one. Well, maybe just one more, you know. I'll tell you what, the hardest, one of the hardest things for me is walking through a grocery store. Honestly. I try to avoid the junk food aisles, but they put them at the end of the aisle. You know, it irritates me. And I'm walking along and I'm, okay, you know, we go out along the outside of the grocery store. You go over to the fresh produce area and you say, okay, I get out my little book here, you know. And I'm opening up and I say, all right, um, get my pencil. I carry a pencil in my pocket here on this little side pocket thing. And I go, okay, um, we need some uh, onions, bag of onions. Go over, get the bag of onions off the thing, and put it in there, and check and make sure that they're good. Okay. Um, I need some uh, potatoes. Potatoes. And, uh, write that down. And, all right, now we're going to go over to the organic aisle or whatever, and we'll go down through and we'll get canned beans or we'll get some, you know, marinara sauce or something like that. Good stuff. It's not toxic. And we'll go down through and we'll check, check. I get to the end of the aisle. A little Debbie's cakes. Oh, that's, man, I. Oh, I used to love those oatmeal cream pies and oh no they actually have those peanut butter chocolate uh, bars the, the things oh, I remember those boy I used to love that I remember at work I used to eat those and I would have a Dr. Pepper to drink and I'm not joking I, that's what I did oh wow oh they have the the thing there the uh, brownies with the white icing on it and the little sprinkles on top of there and and boy I used to enjoy those and, and oh, oh wait no just stop all right, get down to the next aisle, you know, looking for meat, and you go to the end of the aisle, and, oh, there's gummy fish, <laughs> Swedish fish, oh, gummy bears, oh, look, M&Ms, oh, man, I haven't had m and oh, there's the ones with the peanuts inside, and, uh, uh, oh, wait, <sighs> okay, no, I get down to the freezer section, you know, and I'm walking through, and I'm saying, okay, don't look over that way, you know, sour cream, and I eat some sour cream, and I eat some butter, and thinking, yeah, this this will help me be stronger as a Christian, and I can live this way, and Rocky Road ice cream on sale. Oh man, that looks good. Oh, Treasure Island, or I forget what the one thing was called I had years ago. Was birthday cake ice cream, and, and there's strawberry and black raspberry ice cream, and oh, there's Friendly's ice cream cakes, and oh, there's this and it. <laughs> Walk down through the juice aisle, and behind me is the poison pop back there, you know. Reaching out its little invisible hands, drink me, drink me. <laughs> you, no, get away, get away, get no. I don't. I want to stay healthy. Stay healthy. No, 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 no. You know. And believe you me, there have been times I've given in. I've just kind of, wow, well, you know, just a little bit won't hurt or something, and I'm sick, and I it just stuff's toxic. I mean, maybe you, some out, you out there, you can drink that stuff, eat that stuff, whatever else. And it doesn't affect you bad, but it affects me bad. I know what it does to me. I know it hurts my flesh, which ends up tiring out my spirit. And I'm too tired to think of sermons and whatever else. Just stay away from that stuff. Verse 17. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my Flesh doesn't say soul, doesn't say spirit, it's in your flesh. Dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would not, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me, for I delight in the law of God. After the inward man, my soul, that's the inward man. That's what it's talking about. I delight in the law of God. I want to read his word. I want to have communication with God. Verse 23, but I saw, but I see another law in my members, the flesh, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. That is the seal of the Holy Spirit. That's how you know that you genuinely are saved if you're struggling. So, huh? I thought, no, the, the Holy Spirit, you can speak in tongues, you know, that, and I can, I can be healed, you know, whack people on the forehead and, oh, you know, 
No. The seal of the Holy Spirit is that struggle. It's the war. It's the war of the flesh versus the spirit of your mind. The times that you eat the wrong thing, that you start to sing the wrong kind of music. You're walking through the store and, you know, on comes the 80s rock or whatever else, classic rock, and, you know, and, uh, you know, and you're walking along, you hear, you know, Creedence Clearwater Revival or something, you know, and you're going, born on the by, stop, no, uh, here's uh, then Guns N' Roses comes on or something, you know, Welcome to the Jungle. Or, they, they play this junk up here. You know, I guess maybe in cities, I don't know, do they play a newer music or something up? I live in the middle of nowhere, so people are, you know, stuck in the 1980s and 90s up here. But that stuff just, it's its as if the devil puts it in their minds to, you know, play that stuff just to mess with Brian. You know, I mean, I, I realize that they, you know, Probably not, but the whole point is I feel that way sometimes. You know, put the tasty cakes out there that he used to like. Put the candy here and put that there just as a temptation to the poor guy. Just to keep jabbing his flesh, see if I can get him to fall, you know, and get him messed up so he's ineffective for a few days at least or something. <laughs> That's how I feel. And you know what? I didn't feel that way when I was a false professing Christian. I went out and I did what I wanted. Hey, you know, I'm, I, you know go buy candy. I mean, I literally, one of my favorite things to do when I was in high school, and even after I got out of high school, my friend and I, we'd go out to Park City Center down in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and they had a, a candy store, Help Yourself is what it was called. And they had these big clear bins with the lids, you know, you'd flip up the lid and these silver scoops, you know, these big scoops. And we'd go in there and you'd get this big plastic bag, Help Yourself on it, you know, and you'd, I would get a uh, blueberry jelly beans, Jelly Belly Jelly Beans and Grape and Strawberry, I think it was. And I'd, I'd get, you know, five pounds of these things or something. This big, huge bag of candy, you know. And then my friend and I would go back to his place and we'd sit there playing video games, you know, Panasonic 3DO at the time. And then we update, upgraded to Sony PlayStation, going way back, I know. Um, the original ones, okay. I'm not saying PlayStation, whatever the number is now. But we get that stuff and we just sit there and I'd be just eating junk food, you know, get these uh, candy coated, red candy coated peanuts and things. And I had no conviction of that stuff. There was no struggle between the spirit and the flesh. We got along just fine. I was dead in trespasses and sins. Holy Spirit wasn't there convicting me. All that I'd get occasionally is the Holy Spirit saying, hey, you know, why don't you think about me a little bit here? You, know, you need to be saved. That's all I'd get occasionally. But a, a war going on in between my mind and my flesh didn't exist until after I got saved. So if you're struggling with sin and uh, you're fighting it and saying, oh, I can't believe I fell for this. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry and whatever. Well, there's a pretty good chance that you're saved. Okay? So be encouraged. <laughs> it should be an encouragement to you. Continuing here, Romans chapter 8, go down to the next chapter, verse 1, we'll start there. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It's a condition. There's no condemnation. The Lord's not going to condemn you as long as you're walking after the Spirit. You're not walking after the flesh, in other words. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, it wasn't in sinful flesh, it was the likeness of it. It was a corruptible body that he was in. And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. His righteousness is imputed to you when you get saved. What right do you have then to go around and sin without any conscience? Hmm. I see these false prophet preachers out there like Michael Pearl did a whole video on that devil and he's out there and he's saying Jesus died to get rid of the payment of sin and you know or whatever the penalty of sin so you can have what you've always wanted you can live in sin and have no conscience it's basically what the guy said I have the video I think it's on rumble I don't know if it's on here or not but I did a whole thing about that just unbelievable um Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
For they that are after the they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen to that. <laughs> uh, the wages of sin is death. Um, I've told plenty of stories. I'll tell you some more stories. I, my son likes to hear these stories. You know, at night he's going to bed and he says, you know. I'll lay on his bed beside him and he'll say, you know, tell me stories from your childhood. And I'll say, okay, and well, I'll tell him these stories. He loves to have that time. You know, just look, my father did the same thing with me. He'd tell me stories and things. And I pass a lot of those stories on to my son now. Stories my father told me and now I tell him those stories. But one of my famous stories, and I might have told this in a video in the past, but just bear with me. I'll tell you if you haven't heard this one. Went to this uh, reunion type of a thing, family get together. Uh, some friends, childhood friend of my father, um, Bert uh, Smoker, I think it was. He was a former Amishman, and he had a uh, younger brother that him and his wife and their children actually were missionaries to Germany, and they came back and they were there, you know, visiting, and um, and so he they invited our family, so we went over there and everything, and and one of the relatives worked at uh, there was a candy factory down in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Can't think of what the name of that candy factory was now but um they one of the things that they made was twizzlers you know the red licorice and things it's not really licorice <laughs> it's just you know terrible toxic candy red food you know coal tar dyes and the whole thing high fructose corn syrup and they had this whole like folding leg table you know the the wooden type plywood top of a table or whatever you know veneered plywood table brown and then the, the legs fold down and click into place you know and they had this thing just mountain of twizzlers on it well junk food head here I, I looked at that and i just thought you know free twizzlers oh i'm going to take advantage of this <laughs> and i remember i went and nobody's looking they're all over there talking you know had an outdoor barbecue thing it was a summertime and and i remember i went over and i grabbed the pack of those twizzlers and i went and crawled in the back seat of our family station wagon and I'm back there ripped the bag open I'm just eating Twizzler after Twizzler I ate that whole bag myself you know and uh you know I was out there just you know then I had all the energy in the world and I was just you know flying around the yard running and playing with the other children there and they had this willow tree I remember in the weeping willow you know the branches hang down these long strands and I remember grabbing the branches and I'm swinging back and forth on this tree and the whole limb just broke and fall down and smacked me on the head and everybody's are you okay you know of course I was fine I'm, I'm flying high with all the sugar and so okay it's time to go and I, I started to feel the uh, you know live after the flesh he shall die and I remember my energy going down and I starting to have the sugar crash and and I remember we start driving down the road, you know, and the car's just kind of swaying along and bumping. And, and I was in the back, way back. I like to be in the far back of the station wagon, you know. Behind the back seat, you had the big trunk area. Ford LTD or something. I forget what the thing was. But I remember I was sitting back there, and I, I went from sitting to laying down, and the car's just kind of going down the road. And I remember I was thinking, I feel so sick. And I was just laying there thinking, I think I'm going to die. It's so bad. <laughs> And it wasn't too long, and I said, Father, pull it over, pull over, I have to throw up. And he pulled over, and I opened up the back, and I jumped out, and I'm puking my guts out, you know, and went home, and I just laying around, uh, you know, I'm just so sick. So uh, when I read, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, uh, yeah, I'm living proof of that. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times through the years I got sick eating junk food, so, you know, when I, again, when I'm judging people about the junk food thing, I remove the beam out of my eye before I'm judging the speck in your eye, okay? Um, I doubt many of you out there could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with me with what I used to eat junk food-wise, okay? I was a junk food addict. I mean, six cans of Dr. Pepper in a day when I was working at the boat place, uh, just, you know, drinking as I'm working, you know, measure this, cut that, grab my soda, you know, pop poison pop you know and just junk food junk food junk food high school walk around jolly rancher candy in my pocket you know little things pull them out while the teacher's teaching and open it up and you know and bubble gum and you weren't supposed to chew gum but you know you're chewing the gum and the teacher turns around <laughs> junk food 
Easter time, a whole basket full of candy and marshmallow peeps, jelly beans, chocolate, money, you know, and the whole thing just eating, eating, eating. Halloween comes around, you know, going around through the neighborhood. And we go to my grandparents' place. They lived in East Petersburg, PA, and they had this big, huge development. And we would just walk around with them, you know, and, and all your grandchildren, all oh, this is cute. You know, we're dressed up and I mean, we get this little plastic pumpkin thing. It's just overfilled with candy, you know, you're coming home and the whole way home, you're eating candy. So when I read in the Bible, to be carnally minded is death. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know about that. I know about that very well. And spiritually minded is life and peace. You know, I made the decision, and if you're out there as a junk food head, please listen to what I'm saying. I made the decision at one point in time. I thought, you know, I'm sick and tired of being, getting sick. I don't like to be sick. I wonder what would happen if I ate all good food. I wonder what would happen. I wonder if I would not get sick anymore. Well, I get sick rarely, occasionally, now that I'm eating all good food, but uh, it's rare, very rare. I mean, when my wife first met me, we first got married, uh, we first started coming up to Maine in 2013, and we got married in 2012, first made our trip up to Maine in the fall of 2013, bought our prop first property, then bought our second property, um, Bear Land, and a little junky house in the town of Bridgewater, 2014, January of 2014, and I was detoxing. I was starting to eat a lot healthier at that point in time, but I was detoxing from all the years of sugar, and it was bad. I mean, I had, um, uh, what's the thing? You get real dizzy. can't think of the, the word right now. Um, I'll think of it. But, I mean, just terrible detoxing. I, I think I told this story before. I was uh, went to this gas station, and, and I was so sick, just, Oh, you know, and I'm trying to pump gas, just, you know, driving all these hours and things and just detoxing and, I mean, really in bad shape. And this guy comes up and he says, hey, just want to say praise the Lord for your bumper stickers and, and things. And I'm a Christian too. And I just really appreciate your witness and whatever. And I was just kind of, yeah, well, praise the Lord, brother. Uh, <laughs> I probably thought, what's with this guy? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just, you know, the wages of sin is death. You know, I'm trying to get through it here. Um, vertigo is the thing. I'd get vertigo attacks, you know, and the whole, you know, I remember the trying to move stuff out of the house only after we bought it and moved in in January. And, and my one neighbor, you know, was driving by and the whole, everything starts to spin and I'm holding on to this thing. And, and he drives by and I, you know, wave to him. Hey, how you doing? And he got out of sight. And I, I didn't want him calling the ambulance or something on me. And I just kind of went Vump, and fell down into the snow. I've been through it. So I can look at this scripture here and I can say, I understand when the Holy Spirit came in, he started to say, Brian, clean up your life. Don't live after the flesh. If you live after the flesh, ye shall die. Don't do that. I want you alive, son. I want to lead you into the way of truth. I'm not your enemy because I'm trying to convict you of your sins. It's not a good thing. I mean, television, again, television and movie head. This guy right here, this old sinner right here. I used to watch it all the time. All the big shows back, you know, in the 1990s and things. I knew all of them. You know, I was a big fan of Seinfeld and The Simpsons and Friends and Frasier. And I mean, you just name MASH. I'd watch MASH and, and all this different stuff. And that stuff was wrecking my brain. All the movies and things, Hollywood movies, I, was, I mean, they should have been preferred customer or something, customer of the year. I was just in there just renting movies every single week. Get off of work, I'd be going home, cash my check, get a little bit of money out and go over to the rental A to Z video store and uh, go in and I'd rent movies. So I understand what sin does to you. That's why I preach against it. But let me finish here. Uh, verse 7 through 9, Romans chapter 8, verse 7 through 9. Sorry for the rant. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. How can you please God when you're in poor health? How can you please God when you're listening to filthy music, when you're watching filthy stuff on YouTube? How can you please God? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. 
Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So you can't say, well, I'm just in the, you know, it's just the way it is. It, we're, nobody's perfect. And I'm not a saint. And, you know, I hear people saying that. Uh, well, you might actually be telling the truth on that one. Um, you're supposed to have a different life. You can't say, um, I'm just, it's all just flesh and I, my flesh tells me what to do. No, if you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit there. One more place to go to and then we're done for the study here. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, beginning in verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Now, again, I'm really hard on my flesh because I understand how bad my flesh is, how corruptible my flesh is. And so I say, okay, uh, you know, I could get in the vehicle and drive over to the post office. No, you need to walk. <sighs> yeah, you're probably right. Um, hey, you know what? I'm going to take my truck and I'm going to use my truck to pull this log. No, you need to pick it up with your some other thing, you know, and pull it and do it. Oh, yeah, I probably should do that to put my... I'm constantly putting down my flesh. What can I do to put down my flesh? Um, having a hard time going to sleep. Okay, get up and go read the Bible. You know, I, I do that. I'm mortifying my flesh and putting it down. Not to earn salvation. All right, that's not why I'm doing that. I want to be a stronger Christian. That's why you do that. Um, <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5 uh, where are we at um, for brethren ye have been called under liberty only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh but by love serve one another for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself but if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The more you spend time in this book, the more you sing hymns, you aren't going to fulfill the lusts of your flesh. It's just that simple. One of the quickest ways to overcome the pornography addiction thing is, every time you get tempted, and you know, oh, I'm just tempted to look, nobody's here, I want to look this up online, I'm just going to kind of go to this website that I've been to before, and I'll just kind of take a quick look and see if there's anything new or something. <laughs> I know all about that too. When you're going to do that, I can tell you exactly what will destroy the lust, just like that. You know what it is? Get a hymn book. I have one right over here. Get a hymn book. Open up to a hymn. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. That's a good one right there. Um, open up and start singing it. And you will feel your flesh and your lust just go down like that. Promise you it works every time if you're saved. If you're not saved, well, it's not going to be much help to you. Verse 17, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. So it's not just a matter of, oh, the, the spirit's just kind of there weakly, just kind of saying, please, you know, do what's right. You know, you, you see these things, they have the angel on the one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder or something. Uh, no. <laughs> it's not this little, you know, nice little guy over here kind of, please. No. The spirit against the flesh. The Spirit is against the flesh. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, when you're saved, that seal of the Holy Spirit will be. The Lord will say, don't do that. Put that down. You're not going to eat that. You know what's going to happen. What do you do? Why did you do that? That was stupid. You, know, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Okay, you're not going to go to hell. The law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Uh, verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which commit such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God in that passage? It's a reference to spiritual 
fellowship. Peace, joy, and... and uh, let me find the verse quick. It's over in the book of Romans. I wanted to get that right. This is not in my notes. I'm just... Lord put this in my mind as I'm preaching here. All right. Found the verse. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when you read over here in verse 21 of Galatians chapter 5, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's not talking about the millennial kingdom it's, or heaven. It's talking about uh, peace and righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. All right. If you want righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, you have to abstain from these fleshly lusts here. As I'm preaching through this, my flesh and my spirit, if you haven't noticed, are very much fighting right now. A lot of fleshly things coming back to my mind, and some of it is good. I'm trying to warn people out there, but start getting my brain all confused and everything here. Verse 22, Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So that's going to be it for this study. I really do hope it's been a challenge to you. Um, again, don't ever look at me and say, well, Brother Brian is just the most sanctified, holy guy, just never made mistakes. Don't think that, because that's certainly not true. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I've done a lot of really stupid things. And um, there are many times when I should have done something that I knew was right. Holy Spirit convicted me about it, and I didn't do that. But that struggle there, the struggle between the flesh and the Spirit, is proof. That's the seal of the Holy Spirit being there. And it's nice to know that I am sealed until the day of redemption. And that if I do things, if I mess up according to the flesh, that I'm going to pay for that in this life. If he live after the flesh, he shall die. Um, if I go out and I buy a bunch of junk food, or if I go and spend a whole bunch of time on my computer over here and waste time on video games or some kind of thing like that, thankfully the Lord's pretty much taken that as a desire away from me. Same thing with pornography. Um, but if I would go back to that stuff, what's going to happen is my flesh will be punished, not my soul, the inward man, or my spirit up here, the spirit of my mind. Um, it's not going to be affected. I will be vexed, but that's all that will happen. I am sealed until the day of redemption, and you are too if you're a Christian. So just to answer that question, um, lost people, they're, they say, oh, my flesh is good, it's wonderful, it's a beautiful thing, I don't have any conviction of the sin stuff like you do, I don't believe that I'm in need of a Savior, I don't believe that I need to sanctify things or whatever else. Um then you don't have the seal of the Holy Spirit of God in your life. And if that's the way you feel, uh, you really need to examine yourself because I can pretty much tell you, you that you are lost if you don't feel that war between the soul, the spirit, and the flesh, as the Bible talks about in the book of Galatians. And if you're Christ, then you will crucify the flesh. And that's what my recommendation is to you. You can have victory over poor health. You can have victory over um, evil thoughts and things like that and wasting time and all the different things that are out there. You can have victory over that, but you have to stay by the book and be led by the Holy Spirit of God. And that's what I recommend. That's my desire for my viewers. And it's my desire for myself. And so hopefully that has been a blessing to you. Um, Again, thank you to everybody out there for supporting the ministry. I can't say that enough. That's um, a great blessing to me to be able to continue preaching the Word. And I try to do my very best. And um, so I guess that will be it for now. Again, thank you very much for watching. And uh, please do keep us in your prayers.